Hello, we are Geeks Assembled and Ethan and Susan have joined me today to talk about a um, 1983 movie um, which has, shall we say, four of the great horror icon actors. And this movie is the only time that these four actors have acted together in one movie. Um, they may have acted together, um, one or two may have acted in other movies together, but having them all four together in one movie, this is the only time. And that was a bit of a coup for this movie. Um, we are talking House of the Long Shadows, starring Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, John Carradine, and Peter Cushing. Uh, to name you know to name the four iconic horror actors, um, also starring um, Desi Anes Jr., um, whose famous parents, of course, we all know. Mm -hmm. we don't have to Lucy know and Desi. Yeah, uh, um, he's a he's a Cuban he's a Cuban American. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. This story is about a, nov a, a, a writer who sets up a bet with his publisher to write a novel in, a, in one night. And his publisher knows of a, you know, an ideal place where he's not going to be uh, bothered, of, you know, an old house where he can just sit and write. So he goes there and, it, and, the, and the, the mansion is in, of all places, it's in Wales. Um, but as he gets there and finds out, he's not alone in the in this house. So let's go over to these two um, fabulous people and go for, with their opening thoughts. Um, Susan, over to you. All right. Well, um, let me tell you, David Carradine, Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, and and John, Christopher John Lee. John Carradine. Oh, John Carradine. Sorry. He's he's the daddy. I get them confused. Oh, okay, that's right. Um, and Christopher Lee and Peter, uh, excuse me, Vincent Price, um, Peter Cushing, and I'm just going to keep going around if I don't stop right now. I mean, they are the best. They're really the best. I mean, we got we got Vincent Price who does who at the, the same year this was made was doing the the monologue for Thriller, and yeah. I mean that was amazing. And uh, and you know Christopher Lee does does heavy metal now, or did right before he passed away, and. Um, Peter Cushing, you know, he was he was Doctor Who, and he's Grand Moff Tarkin, and he and he's uh, he's voice faked in in all of the the Clone War, the Star Wars Clone Wars, and Star Wars Rebels. It's just amazing stuff, and and you know, Desi Arnaz Jr. was was really. He was really fun to watch. He wasn't, he didn't take the role over seriously and he didn't overact it. It was, it was, he always looked like he had a little wonder and a little, uh, a little curiosity. And that was fun. And uh, the whole thing based on a bet, that was really great. Um, and um yeah he his paramour came into it and that was really fun because he'd just seen her the once and he was suddenly you know love at first sight stuff and that was great and so yeah um it was a really incredible story about these this uh this writer who goes through this manner who um, it's it's owned by a family, or it was owned by a family, the Grisbanes. Anyway, 
and who knows how much of this stuff is in the the head of our of our lead our lead actor and how much is in reality anyway um i liked it a lot and i really love these four actors together i mean we even have some uh well i'll get to those in my favorite moments uh we have some camp stuff anyway yeah <laughs> truly amazing and uh and a delight for for my senses anyway that's that's me over to you thank you thank you susan and we will swiftly move over to um oh ethan oh, that's his yeah yeah his yeah, name him. is ethan yeah, him. over to you him 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 then thanks cheeky bastard <laughs> Oh, that's his name now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I've never, strangely enough, been a fan of all these guys. Peter Cushion, uh, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, and John Carradin. You know, bloody hell, what a cast. I've never heard of anything like that. This was my first time watching it. Um, it is very early 1980s you know some of the acting and stuff like that um I, I i guess i was expecting maybe a bit more it is quite a slow gothic horror movie you know nothing majorly exciting happens like anything big or anything like that but and i do feel this should have been something very big because it, it was a bit slow for me sometimes like i'm they didn't pop in until about, what, 40 minutes into the movie. Well, John Carradine came in about 30 minutes, and then the other guys popped in about 40. But I'll tell you, seeing them all together and the interactions between Christopher Lee and Vincent Price, and even Peter Cushion, I mean, when they just came on together, it was like it was written for the two main characters, the blonde girl and the, the writer to move to the side and just let these guys talk to each other, just throw off each other. That's that's really that, that's it. like that. Just thought, right, this is the bit where Christopher Lee comes in, used to bugger off onto the side and let these three talk. So and they did because it's like they just disappeared. And I'm like, I was I just loved seeing these guys talk to each other, you know, the Grisbans, or are they, you know, talking to each other. You know, throwing off each other. It was great. I, I really loved their interactions. Uh, so it paid off when they all pop in because I, I, when Vincent Price came in, I just gave a big cheer. Peter Cushion, I gave a big cheer. Vincent Price, big cheer. I was just cheering all the way. Christopher Lee, you know, big cheer to see all of them come in. Um, and it sort of plays to like a box standard horror almost in a way until the very end where it's all really a lesson to the writer. Uh -huh. You know, they're all actually actors, which was kind of funny. It, it made me go a bit, what? What? But it was kind of funny, especially the scene that followed where, uh, well, I'll get to favorite scenes after, uh, after, where after they have revealed themselves as actors. There's a bit between Peter, uh, uh, Vincent Price and Christopher Lee, which made me laugh actually. But um, but yeah, it was a it was a good '80s gothic horror movie. You know, like I said, it is slow, and I I, I think there should have been a bit more. Maybe it's just me, a bit more blood, a bit more dark horror. You know, something they would do in their other movies. You know, something dark and violent or big. But um, but no, seeing these guys together, you know it. I loved seeing them together. I think that made it for me. Just every time they pop in, you know, it just brightens the place up. And you're just hooked. You just can't take your eyes off them. So, um, so yeah, those are my opening thoughts to the movie. Um, over to you, Lee. Well, when Canon, the film company Canon, asked uh, uh, Peter, Peter, Peter Walker who's the director of this, um, to make a horror movie. They asked him specifically for a classic horror movie. They didn't want 
or they didn't want slasher. Ah, they just wanted, right. They wanted a classic, like the olden days horror movie. Like thriller. a style. Ah, right, yeah. Um, I, and, saw, I thought that's what they might have been going for, because of the, the classic guys in it. I thought that might have been what they were trying to aim for. But this is where it, the downfall of this movie is, because it was advertised as a horror movie. And everybody who made it said it was a comedy horror. Yeah, it didn't feel like there was any comedy in there. Yeah, it was sort of a, you know, it wasn't a full-on horror. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is where, because it, it failed at the cinema. It, it, it failed at the cinema. Um, Peter Walker, the director, hasn't made a movie since. This was oh. his only movie. Um, it's... Um, to, to get this ensemble cast was just amazing. I know the because I've watched the documentary on the on the uh, DVD. We went out even to get because um, Elsa, Elsa Lanchester, who played the you know the Bride of Frankenstein, they went to get her to play the the, the role of the sister. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't. They couldn't get her. She was too at the time. So um, Sh Sheila uh, Sheila Keith ended up playing the, you know, playing the um, sister, which she was so well done. You know, so really well done in the uh, in uh, in this part. Um, mm. But to get to get to get Price Lee Cushing and Carradine was a coup. Um, yeah. And also, you also you had the well well established. Um, actor Richard Todd as the publisher in this. Yeah. Um, uh, him, him being uh, in the movies from the, you know, 1950s, 40s, um, yeah. TV, uh, uh, Robin Hood. And of course, yeah. a, a little known Doctor Who story called Kinder. He yeah. was in that. Yeah. Uh, and that was a year, Kinder was a year before this movie. So, um, to get these, and also you had a young Julie Pease, Pease uh, what's her name? Pease Good, Julie Pease Good, as the um, heroine who was there. Um, it was, for me, yeah, I know what Ethan's saying. It, it, it is slow in places. The, the actors make separate entities. You know, um, you, you got Carradine and um, Keith pretending to be the caretakers, and then along comes Peter Cushing pretending that his uh, his car's broken down, uh, and then you get um, Pr Price, and then you get Christopher Lee. So mm -hmm. it's a gradual thing. And they, mm -hmm. and, they and, um, and they took some tropes with uh, with. Uh, the, the Vincent Price character, that's like the flip-flop of Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows, the whole TV show, all like uh -huh. 10 years or 12 years, was all about uh, <coughs> a manor run, run by vampires in Maine or in, or in, you know, Massachusetts. I don't know where it is. But uh, with... Uh, the return of somebody from overseas, yeah. like re returning from England, and and that's mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's the flip flop of Dark Shadows, so that that was fun too. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you got, I mean, it was it was a, it was filmed very dark. This the scenery was dark in the house. Um, you didn't see much of the house, and I tell you something: if you ever get a chance to watch the making of, because um, the director and Judah Pease could go back to the house mm -hmm. in a documentary to talk about the movie. Um, yeah, it's in Hampshire, isn't it? Yeah, it's not in Wales. <laughs> yeah, it's in Hampshire, um, I read it up. Uh, oh, Waterfield uh, Park. Yeah, and I tell you something, it's a beautiful house inside, and nothing's changed. The, you know, the, the, the clock on the mantelpiece is still there, the vases on the stairs are still there, the statue at the top of the stairs is still there. But 
the movie that covered everything up with, with sheets and darkened it all, so you couldn't see any of it, really. So, mm. but, I mean, even the dining room table is still there in the same room after, you know, all this time. Well, um, at some point, I'll go check it out. That'll be on the list when I move back to England, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, and it, watching this, uh, Julie Peasgood was getting so emotional because she said she had the best time of her life making this movie. Um, they say it might not have been successful, but she said to be in the same room as these four actors... Um, oh, do you know what? I don't blame her. Bless her. I don't blame her. She says, she said the antidote, you know, the antidotes of, um, you know, sitting there with John Carradine, um, you know, going, getting him a cup of coffee or whatever and just listening to his stories or um, Peter Cushing was chatting away to her and Christopher Lee kept himself to himself. He was one of the, the, the odd one out of them. He just kept himself to himself. Um but she said, but Vincent Price was the joker of the pack. She, she said he was full of mischief. <laughs> so, but and in this, she said there was a letter she received in 1989 from Peter Cushing. Um, oh. Reminiscing, it's in, it's in the document, just reminiscing about the wonderful times they had sitting, sitting in, you know, in this house. Filming, filming this in 1982, 83. Fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, um, you can, I, I think you can believe, you know, to have those people, to listen to their stories, uh, and then to get them to act in this movie, uh, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> and I agree with what you said about Desi Arnaz and, and Julie Pease could being sort of pushed to the side when these four people are on the screen. But what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on. I know. So I thought that. I thought, no, you've got, they're in the room. Please let them all talk together. You two, yeah. stay out. I want to hear these guys. And it did. Yeah. It didn't disappoint that bit where they just talked together, all of them. It was great. Yeah, that I was mean, a blast. I mean, the director, the director said in the, in the documentary, he says, uh, Peter Cushing, such a gentleman, he said, you know, he came up to me and said, I'm going to play this character with a speech impediment. And we said, oh, go for it. <laughs> it wasn't in the script. Peter Cushing just came to it, you know, with, I'm going to, with, you know, with his R's. <laughs> for Waterwick. Waterwick, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I... I agree. It is, it is a, a slow burn, this one. But once these people are on screen, you just can't take your eyes off it. Mm -hmm. And and then you get the deaths. Uh, you know, they slowly bumped off one by one. Um, so it's, it's it's so good. Um, but as 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 you say, is it is it true? But it's not true because it, spoilers. It's the author writing the story. Yeah. So none mm -hmm. of it, none of it happened. It was just the story. He was right. He sat down at the beginning of the movie, writing the story. Then it goes into what he's writing, but you don't mm -hmm. know that until the end. <laughs> but, I love, uh, I love, I love the the people that he had in mind for 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 his for his characters. Yeah. True. Yeah. So these guys are awesome. The the very yeah the uh, the. I mean, most say so most of the cast are no longer with us now. I know. Um, I think there's only about uh, Desi and Nez Jr. is still with us. I know that. Um, and the two people who came from the train station are still with us. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the rest of them are all gone. Um, so. Over to you, Phil, for your moments of this movie. Go ahead, um, Ethan. Oh, oh favourite moments? Um, well, I've, actually, I'll quickly mention, because I did love the bit after the scene where they revealed they were actors and stuff like that. Um, there was just something about the conversation between Vincent Price and Christopher Lee. 
as actors, you know, saying like, Oh, it was so good. You fell down all the way down the stairs and stuff like that. You're well done. Oh, yes. And you with your many deaths, you always done <laughs> or something like that. You know, it's just something about that. I really liked just how they throw off each other as actors. And you could. But what was it? What was uh, Vincent Price's part in shot in that? You went, What's you that? went, bitch. Bitch. <laughs> 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 it was just great because it was almost like a, a sort of a parody of what they are like in real life, you know, how they are talking to each other as typical actors. Um, I just loved it. There was just something about that scene when you see them all that, relax, it, no more acting and stuff like that. It was just nice and stuff like it that. It was so camp in that scene. I it just, was, yeah, it was very camp and I loved it. It was. It was so great. Um, um, what else did I like? Oh, I loved um, the brunette when she was like, you know, in her underwear, getting her face washed. I mean, bless her, she got the acid, but okay, she didn't really die in the end. <laughs> do, you know, do you know, I can't remember her name, but do you know who got her that job? Uh, Louise English. Mm. No. Benny Hill. <laughs> Because she was one of um, Benny's, was it, was she? she was one of Benny's angels on TV. Hmm. All oh, right. Oh, yeah, she was. Now I've just remembered. Yeah, I could picture her actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. He 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 put he put forward for the part. Oh. So Uncle Benny sorted her out for that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. She got to work <laughs> with some princes. Mm -hmm. And he uh, still got the. She had because in the documentary she takes out the, the script for the movie, mm -hmm. all signed by the actors in it. Come on. Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. Um I think I mentioned like the introductions of each character, you know, the big stars when they come in and stuff like that. And then their big interaction in the um the hall. Well, in the, the living room sort of place. And just how they play off each other, how they talk to each other as sort of like brothers and stuff. It's just great. Um, obviously, how they all get bumped off. But, um, and the big finale where it was um, revealed that Christopher Lee's character was a uh, Wadrick Roderick. <laughs> You know, the psycho that was locked away for 40 years. Um, he was great. I love it. It's just Christopher Lee. He always plays these such, like the all of them, they've all got such a presence mm. and such charisma and um, gravitas. Uh, and when he just turns into this psycho, he's great. And he's always quite scary, Christopher Lee, even if it's like, not full on horror. He's just got such a creepy look in his eye and stuff like that. that he's going to get you and stuff like that. Yeah. Even with Dracula, uh, he's one of my favorite Draculas because he had such a creepy look. He could be charming and handsome, but when he gets creepy, he really gets creepy. Yeah. Um, I think because he's so tall as well. Um, but you know, I just love that little switch and stuff. But it shows how great actors that they are. You know how they switch from these this sort of a strained family to you know, a very off family and then to these light-hearted, flamboyant, eccentric actors. Yeah. You know, they just give such a great performance. Um, I would say those are my favourite moments, to be honest. So over to you. OK, we'll move over to Susan. All right, well... Um... One of my favorite moments is in the station, train station, looking for the place. And the, the, the scene goes like this. The station master looks at him and says, Oh, Patrimor Manor, that's amazing. No, no, no. He says, that's, it's a cursed place. And uh, the author says, yeah, I'm sure it's drenched in evil. 
And then he said, mm -hmm. it's a cursed place. And then he said, filled with things best not spoken of. Yes, I saw the movie. Do you know how to get there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could tell there was going to be humor in it at that point a lot. And uh, I just really loved the scene. I love the scene in uh, in uh, the hall where all of them were speaking also. And let's see. Um, I love, I love, uh, um, this, I love the bit where, uh, hang on, where um, Vincent Price says, um, don't interrupt me while I'm soliloquizing. Yeah. Oh, the stairs, yeah. <laughs> and he go, he's just, he's doing this whole story of the house and story of himself and stuff. So that was fun. I liked that. I, and I liked uh, um, I liked the bit where uh, where they are uh, where they are at the end and uh, and they're going around the the room and uh, he meets his paramour and turns out she's married to someone else and it's like his heart crashes it's just that you could see that was really you know oh and this is this I, and, and you know this is my husband and and he's like oh. yeah, the, the, the guy who um the author yeah yeah, yeah. Dr. Poison was her husband yeah yes Oh my gosh! <laughs> and then the other scene that I really liked is when they're all when they're all standing on on the bottom of the stairs, and she turns to look at at the author and goes downstairs to join all of them. Yeah, and it, yeah, and it sort of dawns on him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those those reality checks were really fun, and they're done with so much humor, and they're done with so much, you know, and. Who knew that I'd like a Golan Globus film for crying out loud? I mean, like these guys, like those guys were everything in the 80s. But I mean, anyway, oh, that, that was fun. And, um, and so we have Doctor Who, um, we have uh, Saruman, the wise, and we have we have Dracula, and we have uh, um, Lionel. Anyway, we have all the greats in this movie. Well, we were if it, if it did come to fruition in the mid seventies, we would have had Vincent Price playing Scratchman. <laughs> wow. Oh wow! Not oh, to, to who meets Scratchman with Tom Baker. Um, they they were going for, going for Vincent Price, but it never got off the ground. Oh, that would have been amazing! Wow! Now I know who to now I know who to think of when I read Scratchman. I can hear his voice. That that's amazing. Yeah. Um, any more? Shall I? Shall I? Uh, shall no, I start? Yeah, it's you. It's yours. Um, oh, it's a star. One of the one one of the things what made me giggle was when the the sister got murdered, and Vincent Price went piano wire. The, the must have heard her sing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was good. Um, also. Um, I mean, you might be able to see it in the movie if you go back and watch it, but in the documentary, the director was saying, and, and Julie Peasley was saying, where they were all sat around the dining room table, the scene there, they're all there, and, you know, John Carradine, the head of the family, is at the end of the table. Uh, they're all talking away, and 
the actors, Vincent Price is looking to Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion, and they're all looking like that, and they're looking at John Carradine, and he's got his head down. And they said, he was asleep. <laughs> he, he, fell. he fell asleep while they were recording. And I think, I don't know, it was, it was either Vincent Price looked to Peter Cushing or Peter Cushing looked to Vincent Price, and they just went, carry on. And they sort of carried oh, on. I'll need to go back and look at this. <laughs> so does, does he actually? Oh, I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna go back and look at this. This sounds great. Apparently, apparently he does, but this, you know, they carried on with the, with the dialogue. And as soon as they finished their dialogue, and when he was due to speak, his head came up like that, and he did his <laughs> bit. <laughs> but apparently, the director said he was definitely asleep. <laughs> Um, and for me, one of the um, standout little scenes was with Julie Peasgood and Peter Cushing uh, down in the tunnels in the dark with the candlelight, and he's talking about fear. And because fear is the only thing he has ever known. Uh, that little scene where Peter Cushing is just doing his little little speech to her. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing that. And then mm -hmm. said, and, the, and then the candle goes out. And the next thing he's he's hanging from the ceiling, sort of thing. Uh, but that is such a lovely little scene. And it, it just shows you what a good actor Peter Cushing was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was. I did like that speech a lot. I mean, there was little, there was little nods to other horror movies in this. Um, what, one of the main ones was um, Vincent Price's demise, where Christopher Lee chops him up with an axe. Um, that was a nod to Vincent Price's role in Witchfinder General. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what happened in that movie, sort of thing. Um, yeah. so little nods to little other movies. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Those are some some of my favourite. Um, Things in this movie. Anything else? What anybody like to say about the House of the Long Shadows? No. no. Right. Okay, we'll go to final Saints score then. Um, oh, oh, Susan. Sorry. The, what, one more what? thing about this is it had another connection to our to Dark Shadows because the the story of Dark Shadows, their movie is called. The House of the Dark Shadows. Mm -hmm. And it is basically like a condensed version of their of their family story. So I mean there were some connections with the that TV show and this movie. Um yeah. only only in like some basic <laughs> the basic plot and and the name. But anyway, I just thought that that was really interesting too mm -hmm. and the fact that that all of these four fellows have played vampires so you know that oh, family yeah. could be nothing but vampires mm. in my opinion. yeah so so what's your final screen score then Susan? i'll give this uh i will give this 10 goblets of sherry in crystal glasses out of 10. Cool. Or um, was that sherry? Or was that blood? Uh, punch. So, oh, yeah, Ethan. punch. That's right. <laughs> Ethan, over to you. Um, yeah, what would I give this? Um, because I did love seeing these guys all together. It was so good to see them all together. Um, I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna give it a, a seven out of ten, just because I have seen some of their films, which I consider better. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that. But I'm, I'm gonna give it a, a good, decent <laughs> seven out of ten. You know, it's <laughs> it's not a perfect film, but it's not bad either. You know, because it's got some <laughs> good moments in it. And, you know, it sounds like they had an absolute blast filming this from what you're telling me, you know, all the stories. So 
And that's all that matters. They had such a good time filming it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll give it um, seven out of ten. Well, seeing as this movie was based on a 1913 play uh, called Seven Keys to Bold Pit, mm-hmm. um, and, um, and there was a movie in 1947 of the same name, mm-hmm. so this is sort of a remake, um, loosely based on the remake uh, of the original. Um, it did rather well. And, as I said earlier on, to get these actors in one movie together, which no other film company ever did, you know, they had some pulling power to get these in, get this in the movie. It's a shame, you know, that the the movie didn't live up to the hype um, of the advertisement of the movie. Mm-hmm. But it's just a joy to see these actors you know, bouncing off each other with dialogue. Yeah. Because um, you're never going to get actors of that sort of standard ever again. Oh, no. No. Um, so, so for me, it's still an enjoyable movie. Yes, it's not a perfect movie. So I'm going to give this... Ooh, what shall we give it? Hmm, I'm going to give it 7.5. 7.5 piano wires out of 10. <laughs> One of my favourite lines in that. Must yeah. Have been. Must uh, have been. And only he could pull that off, couldn't he? Only he could pull off that comedy. <laughs> that proper macabre comedy. What is it? It's macabre, yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to thank Susan and Ethan talking <laughs> the House of the Long Shadows. You guys out there, if you've seen the movie, leave a comment let us know what you think of it. Um, uh, get in touch with us if you would like to be on our cast or in the group. Uh, leave a message below on you, in the YouTube or on Facebook, Twitter, and that will try and get you one. Um, as well, as if you want to uh, be notified every time we post a new video on YouTube, press the notification button, the bell notification. that you, Tinkerbell? Uh, but, and, you know, we'll see if we can get you on. Um, I don't think that's well done, isn't it? Nope. nope. No? Well, along on that note, then, happy viewing, happy subscribing, get involved in what we do, or we'll come round there, we'll in the middle of the night, and we'll put a bat up your nightdress. Good night.